We seem to be at an impasse right now when it comes to buyers and sellers right now. There seems to be no movement between the two guys. It doesn't seem like it's a buyer's market or a seller's market at the moment. But the question is, is what's causing the market not to move and for it to just be stagnant at the moment in the hottest season of the year to purchase a home and to sell a home also, guys. We're gonna talk about that, guys. And my name is Orlando. Welcome to the channel. Make sure you check in the description. I have a real estate for investing for beginners and a YouTube course. Let's jump into this, guys. It says, home sales barely budge from April to May in a sluggish spring market. Sales from previously owned homes were essentially flat in May compared to April. According to the National Association of Realtors, they rose 0.2% to a seasonal adjusted annual pace of 4.3 million units compared with a year earlier. However, sales were 20.4% lower. Well, why is this, guys? Well, it's pretty easy to understand. So let me explain it for you guys. It's essentially this. We have sellers who are seeing you know what? I don't want to jump into your buyer situation where I'm going to have to pay 7, 8, possibly 9% interest rate on a new home and overpay. And the buyers are like, I'm not overpaying and paying a high interest rate. Are you crazy, seller? <laughs> I will only buy your home once it becomes affordable. Once prices drop down, I will then purchase your home. But until then, I'm gonna sit on the sidelines with a purpose, watch this listing, and watch you drop the price. And that's what's happening. We have two sides that are literally doing a standoff right now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> they are doing a standoff right now. So who's going to win on the standoff? You as the buyer or you as the seller? And that's what's essentially happening right now. And that's the reason why sales are so much lower. That's the reason why you have these realtors coming out to you saying, Hey, 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 man. Listen, as a buyer, hey, man, you can refinance. Hey, we instead of you worrying about the purchase price, just worry about the thing that you can change in the future, which is, the interest rate. Don't worry if you spend $150,000 over asking. D forget about that. Did you see what I did there? It's a scam. <laughs> Uh, just worry about the interest rate. Hey, did you hear? The Fed said that eventually he's gonna drop rates. That could be you. You will be able to get that 3% interest rate. You know, not now, not now, in the future. <laughs> Don't fall for it, it's a trap. <laughs> The realtor is setting down a Yu-Gi-Oh trap card, guys. That's what a realtor is doing nowadays. You have activated it. <laughs> you don't want to be that buyer, guys. And the seller on the other side is trying to say, well, I mean, you know, there's not that many houses to choose from. So you might as well overpay for this one, right? Right? You do want this nice backyard. You do want this basement. You better buy a home now because you know these homes, they're gonna continue going up, up, and up. <laughs> So you will either be on one side or the other, and it's a standoff. The slow spring sale pace is a combination of still high prices and elevated mortgage rate, a critical shortage of homes for sale. So the home shortage is a big pinnacle point because if sellers don't sell, then it's definitely going to be a shortage. I mean, we were already at this low inventory. I know, I know, I know, I know. It's something that a lot of these guys are, are touted. Shortage, 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 low inventory. I get it. I get it. But that still doesn't change the price. <laughs> it doesn't change. I mean, do you really care about low inventory if you're going to pay $100,000 over asking and the home is unaffordable to begin with? Does inventory really matter? Does it make you FOMO into thinking, I can't afford the home right now. So if the price goes higher I definitely won't be able to afford it. So are you willing to jump into an unaffordable situation now or later? That's what a realtor or some of these guys are trying to tell you right now. Here's the thing. If you can't afford it now, you won't afford, be able to afford it when it goes up. So does it really matter? You just want the price to come down. I know, I know. Orlando, you're making too much sense. <laughs> There was just 1.08 million homes on the market at the end of May. That's 6.1% lower than the supply in May of last year. At the current sales pace, that represents a three-month supply. Six months is considered a balanced market, guys. So 
They're saying right now that we have three months and we need six months for it to be balanced. But one of the things that we really have to consider here is new construction. I have been seeing a lot of these construction companies saying they're going to try to push and push and push for more building and more building and more communities. Some of these communities and some of these areas in Texas and whatnot, they have tons of inventory still available for these new homes to purchase. We're not talking about some of these areas. I don't know how Florida is is or maybe in Connecticut or some, but I'm talking about there are some areas that have a bunch of new construction homes. They're moving at a snail's pace when it comes to sales. Maybe that shows you that new construction isn't affordable in those areas, or maybe it just shows you that the demand isn't so high in those areas. So this is the reason guys, this is the reason why on my channel, I am telling you guys, if you're gonna sit on the sidelines, sit on the sidelines with a purpose. Do the research. Make sure in your area that the homes that you're looking at, that you're keeping an eye on, that you're continuing to track these homes. Make sure that you look at new construction in your area to see how those prices are going up, how they're going down. If there's a lot of inventory for you to take advantage of those deals, are prices going down in rent? Are they going up? You need to focus on these things in your area so that you you are put in the best position possible, guys. That's the point of this game. If you're trying to buy a home, you're trying to get a home, you're trying to put yourself in the best position to get a deal. Now, if you just wanna overpay, you can do that today. <laughs> If you want to overpay and you don't care about the price of a home and getting a bad deal and overpaying and don't care what inflation is, you don't care what interest rates are, you just have money to throw, 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 you can buy now, now, now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the truth. But if you are trying to get a deal, like I said, and you want an affordable home, you have to do the work. Fact. You have to make sure you're looking at your local area every day, guys. Newly constructed homes are selling at a pace reminiscent of the pre-pandemic times because of the abundance of inventory in that sector. That was what said was by an economist for the National Association of Realtors. This is what I was talking about, guys. When I said you have to look at your area and make sure that maybe you do have a bunch of newly constructed homes in your area that maybe you didn't know about that are selling at a decent price. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Orlando, well, who's gonna win the war? Who's gonna win this battle when it comes to sellers and buyers? Are sellers gonna eventually break and start selling their properties at affordable rates? Are buyers gonna break and overpay? It really depends on the situation. Here's the thing though. As a buyer, you can't really follow the crowd. This is just my opinion, my thought processes. You can't really follow the crowd when it comes to yourself. What you want to personally do, you cannot be moved. Guys, listen to me. You cannot be moved to ruin your financial situation just because the crowd is moving in a direction that is opposed to what you want. And the same thing goes for sellers. I can't expect sellers to go, hmm, you know what? I know everybody is overpaying. Everybody is overpaying and buyers are easily being found who are overpaying. And I'm not going to let someone buy my house and overpay. You can't expect sellers to do that, guys. <laughs> Because if you were a seller, you're going to try to sell your home for the most amount of money you can get. Well, there, there is some truth in that, yes. You have to really come down to your personal situation. Now, if you're a seller in that same situation and everybody around you is selling at a certain market and you are continually wanting someone to overpay, you're going to pay the price for that. Your home won't sell. So you have to come down to that situation. And on this channel, guys, I have always said, we want to make the best decision for yourself, for you and your family. No matter if you're a buyer or a seller, you have to make the best decision for you and your family. I have said that over and over and over again, and it still rings true today, guys. I believe we can make this work. So do what you have to do to make sure that you don't end up in a situation where you're emailing me. <laughs> <laughs> Orlando, I regret buying this home. I knew I bought the home for 80,000 over asking and the seller told me the roof was fine and the basement, I saw it leaky, but he just said, this is the first time that's ever happened to me. Who does that? <laughs> uh, and I said, oh, no problem. And then I asked you, what did the inspection guy say? And you said, oh, we didn't get an inspection. 
it was one of the rules for me to buy the house was did not get an inspection, but also pay $80,000 over. And then you say, Orlando, but this is the reason why I regret buying the home. Time out. Y'all take a chill. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> you need to cool that out. I don't want to, because you knew, you knew exactly what you were getting into and you signed on the dotted line knowing that this was something that you didn't want in the beginning, but you hoped that it would magically disappear after you purchased it. <laughs> I know it's tough to hear and it's a hard truth pill to swallow, but it's the truth. And I hope that my viewers and subscribers that are looking at this video and say it to themselves, I'm gonna make sure that I'm ready to purchase a home. I'm gonna sit on the sidelines, rent, or maybe you're gonna purchase, but you are gonna do your due diligence. You're gonna have an inspector. You're not gonna waive all your stuff. You're gonna make sure that you are putting you and your family in the best position possible, guys. So as always, guys, you won't get all of your information from this one video. I need you to watch this video here. I promise you, I promise you that it will give you all the great information you need to this crazy housing market news, to get into your first investment property. I promise you the information you will get from this this video will be gold. See you in the next one. Thanks.